Vestibular neuritis, what it is? It is the inflammation of the nerve which sends signals from inner ear to brain. That's your vestibular nerve. And that results in vertigo and imbalance. So what we have got vestibular neuritis, it starts with we. So what I would like to tell you, please remember three more we. What is it? It is vomiting. It is vertigo and what else another is viral infection right so if you have got these three things nausea vomiting vertigo viral infection that will make another we that is vestibular neuritis all right what it is it is the inflammation of the nerve which sends signals from inner ear to brain all right. So what is going to happen? The presenting complaint. What is going to be your presenting complaint? Obviously, it's dizziness or it is uh, vertigo. Right. So what you have to do is you will go in the history in before, during and after. All right. So, for example, what's the presenting complaint? It's vertigo. So what you can do, you can start from during. So patient is saying it's a spinning of the room. Okay, so what you will ask, you can ask like for how long it lasted. Because in vestibular neuritis, uh, for how long it's going to last, it can last for a few hours, right? Can last for a day maybe, right? So you will see during, during, I mean, whether there was any jerky moment. Yes, that is something that you have to ask. Whether there was any loss of consciousness and for how long that episode lasted. What happened after that? Are you still feeling dizzy? You can ask that. And after if you're feeling like any uh, vomiting, any uh, confusion, any sleepiness, any uh, trauma, for example, if patient has. Now you come for before. In before, what you have to do, you have to try to make your diagnosis and you need to rule out your differentials. Okay. Uh, so what we have in vestibular neuritis. So usually you have got fever flu-like symptom. That's what I said, viral infection. And then uh, what else you have got is uh, nausea vomiting. Usually they have got severe nausea vomiting, right? So presenting complaint, what we have got is the vertigo or the balance problem. Then we have got fever flu, nausea vomiting. Now the question comes, uh, do we have got hearing loss in vestibular neuritis? Do we have hearing loss in vestibular neuritis? The answer is no, we don't have. Usually we don't have. What are your main uh, differentials? Obviously the differentials that you will be having is labyrinthitis. It's going to be BPPV. It's going to be mean ears. It's going to be acoustic neuroma, right? So labyrinthitis, what happens in labyrinthitis? You will have everything. You will have everything what you have in vestibular neuritis. But usually, usually it is with uh, hearing loss. So if you have got vomiting, if you have got vertigo, if you have got viral infection, fever flu-like symptom with hearing loss, that is going towards labyrinthitis. So that is going to be your labyrinthitis. All right. Uh, obviously, we have to rule out mean ears and acoustic neuroma as well. In mean ears and acoustic neuroma, what's going to happen? Uh, so uh, will you have viral infection, fever flu-like symptom history? Not really. But what are the other things that you might see? Mean ears, you'll have... Uh, Artinitus, right? The ringing in the ear, earfulness, that is what you're going to see in mean ears disease. Uh, acoustic, uh, what else you will see? Nausea, vomiting is going to be there. Headache might be there. Hearing loss might be there. And balance problem might be there. You might have other cranial nerve sign involvement like uh, uh, blurring of vision. You might have numbness on the face as well. So that is going to be your differentials there, right? So elaborate your dizziness properly. Go in before, during, after and look for these three. We rule out some important differentials, right? And then past medical history, lifestyle, you can quickly go through like the uh, diet, for example, because uh, uh, in the treatment, I would say hydration is very important. So you can ask what kind of diet, alcohol, if they are taking or not, because uh, the management is going to be to avoid these things, right? Uh, ask the patient how it has impacted your work and how's your mood. So that is going to be very, very important. In terms of examination, in terms of examination, what we can ask, uh, we can ask for ENT examination, neurological examination, ear examination, definitely we're going to do. 
All right. Uh, now the treatment, what is going to be the treatment in this? So patient has got severe nausea, vomiting, patient is feeling dizzy, patient is feeling what I go as well. So what else we have to do? Are we going to admit the patient better? Yes, you admit the patient. Yeah. So that you can manage the vomiting, you can do the symptomatic treatment because otherwise, what is the treatment of vestibular neuritis? To be honest, you don't have to do much. It is going to subside on its own. Patient is going to feel better on its own. What you can do is you can actually go for the symptomatic treatment. You can give symptomatic treatment. What your patient has got? Patient has got uh, nausea, vomiting. Give something antiemetics. What your patient has got? Patient has got fever. You can give paracetamol as well. So the treatment is actually symptomatic. It's just the symptomatic, symptomatic treatment. All right. Specific treatment, if we have to go, uh, vestibular rehabilitation, that is something that we can do. Uh, otherwise, it's a self-help, like lifestyle modification, that's fine. Self-help, uh, hydration, that is the main thing. Avoid triggers, avoid driving, uh, avoid using tools when you're feeling dizzy because you might hurt yourself, isn't it? So it becomes very important to ask the history like whom you are living with, right? And maybe we can send our occupational therapist to the house as well so they can make necessary changes in the house. So at least patient won't injure himself or herself when they are feeling dizzy. At least they can cover the sharp edges of the furniture. So these are the things uh, which can be uh, managed. We can, which can be done. And you know, these patients, they actually don't feel very comfortable uh, in going out once they have had this kind of uh, episode, right? So they, they don't have that much of confidence. So what we have to tell them is uh, uh, what you can do after a few days, maybe you can start going out. You shouldn't be worried about it. But what you can do is you can be accompanied by somebody. You can go with someone and slowly, slowly you will see, you will get confidence and then it should be fine. So the, what's the treatment? Treatment is, it is self-limiting. It's inflammation of the nerve and it is going to take some time uh, for the patient to feel better. Symptoms patient has got just do symptomatic treatment. There's nothing else that you have to do. It is about reassurance, reassurance, reassurance. All right. And give the follow-up uh, warning signs as well. Tell the patient to always come uh, for the follow-up and warning sign, warning sign for uh, uh, meniere's warning sign for a caustic neuroma. That is something that you can uh, give it to the patient. Right. In terms of IPS, what are the main things? Eyes, eyes, your bestest friend in the exam, I always say, idea, concern, expectation, right? Always ask what the patient thinks about this uh, condition. Uh, what are their main concerns? Because their, my, their main concern could be this vertigo. Sometimes they have got severe nausea vomiting. So they feel like uh, what else has been happening with me, right? And that is, and what is going to be their expectation? How long it's going to get uh, better? Why I'm having it, right? Uh, when, will it, uh, when will it go away? So all these are the main concerns and expectation you will see from the patient's side. All right, check and check, you know, whenever you give the information, don't give the information in one go. Always what we do is we give the information in bits and pieces. Give this information in small, 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 small chunks and please check their understanding whether they understood it or not. Always make sure you are involving the patient in the consultation. That is the most important thing that you can do. Involve the patient. Say two, three, four lines in the management and let the patient ask you questions. That is really important. Always make sure we are doing patient-centered consultation. I know you may have a lot of things to do in the management, but uh, First, you have to see what your patient wants. Do patient-centered consultation. It's not doctor-centered, it's patient-centered. All right. Acknowledge, always keep on acknowledging the patient's emotions if you really want to get a high score. Body language is very important. The way you're sitting, the way you're talking, you need to tell them, I'm here for you for these eight minutes, right? Signposting, very important when you're moving from one part of the station to other part, always signpost for the patient. And always make sure you have got good ears for the exam. Active listening is very, very, very important. So vestibular neuritis is vomiting, vertigo, viral infection, and the treatment is, it is self-limited you have to do the symptomatic treatment. All right.